So I, I have uh, received a, a number of messages about Russell Wilson, the Broncos dumping their quarterback, swallowing the biggest cap hit in NFL history. And the franchise legend Carl Mecklenburg, if you're old, you know who that is. He was very good on a video game I played when I was a kid as a defensive player for the Broncos. And he unloaded. Uh, He went on a rant uh, on the socials. He said, Russell Wilson isn't a leader. A Bronco legend from the Orange Crush days, Mecklenburg, said the foolishness that went on in his first year at Denver with a private coach, his own office at the facility, and family at training camp when other players didn't have those privileges proved his self-centeredness. Now, while that sentiment has been shared by many in Denver, which is actually more of a shot at Nathaniel Cant Hackett for allowing Russ to have all those goodies, uh, it is not the noise that I am hearing from the electorate in the Maller militia. You know who you are, and I, you probably know where I'm going, but, but maybe not. So by phone, by social media, and by email, I have been bombarded. Again, handful of people. But for me, that's a bombardment. Uh, the constituents in the Maller militia are convinced that Russell Wilson is, is the guy possessing the winning lottery numbers. Now, for Russ, financially, he has already won the jackpot. So we had a call, if you were listening yesterday, the last hour. Guys, I think it's from Boston, but he was calling from Nashville. And he was like, oh, the Patriots, Russell Wilson, you got to get him, blah, blah, blah. All right, so let us discuss the question. The why. Why is Russell Wilson getting so much love from social media? Now, my humble opinion, I've got Liberty, Abracadabra, and Limousine. And we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a honey bun. Uh, I ate I ate a honey bun yesterday from from Little Debbie's, and uh, the uh, yeah it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I'm not, not gonna lie, it's pretty good. All right, so uh, number one, number one, number one. Yeah, there you go. Right. So it is a flaw in the human condition. It is. The, the, the people that are propping up Russell Wilson, it is exposing a flaw. Let me explain. I've learned a little bit about human nature by doing this show. And I think I'm human, but I might be from another planet. I don't know. So we're all programmed the same way. Every man, woman, and child. And there's a, there's a marketing book of all things. I read this old marketing book. God, it's probably been, I don't even want to say how long. It's been a long time. But I, I, th- this book really stuck with me. and. I don't usually retain anything when I read books, but for this, this one paragraph in the book stuck with me, and I've taken that the rest of my life, and the phrase was, once a mind is made up, it rarely, if ever, changes. And we know that from the advertising world, from the marketing world, that once you decide your favorite brand of toothpaste or potato chips or beer or whatever it might be, you very rarely will change your mind. Right. And it applies to the Russell Wilson story because when Russ played for the Seahawks, the consensus was formed that Russell Wilson was a fringe elite quarterback. They had gone to a couple of Super Bowls, even though it was the Legion of Boom defense that was the reason they were doing really good things. And Marshawn Lynch and Russ was kind of along for the ride. And people don't like to change their mind. That's the lesson, right? Once they perceive you one way, that's it. Right? It's like the most important item in the history of fast food is the Happy Meal because kids love, they used to, I don't know about kids today because it's a different world, but when I was a kid, it was like the Happy Meal, right? You get the little toy, and then the rest of your life you eat Big Macs and fries and apple pies and, and all that for Mickey D. But this is also the man that shot Liberty Valance. Because when the legend becomes the fact, you print the legend. It's the same concept. You forget what's right in front of your schnozola there. It's all about the liberty, the man that shot Liberty Valance. Now, Russ has been, we we gave this, this number the other day in a previous episode of the show, but Russ has been the NFL's worst quarterback the last five years in terms of living up to expectations. Now, how do we know that? We turn to the gambling market because the point spread 
is the, the, the dead giveaway for gambling. Right? And nobody has underachieved more. He has the worst quarterback uh, numbers, winning percentage, against the spread the last five years. So that goes back to the end of his time with the Seahawks. But the legend continues, right? When the legend becomes the fact, you go with the legend. Now, page two here as we continue the hour of Russell Wilson. So how did you grade Russell Wilson's performance with the Broncos in 2023? Now, Denver uh, had a horrific performance against the Dolphins where they, they gave up a 70-burger in that game, and they ended up around 500. They weren't over 500. You can't be at 500 because play an odd number of games, but they were close. Right? They were close. Now, for the casual observer, Russell Wilson, this is the perception I've gotten from the people that have given me feedback up the wazoo, by the way that Russell Wilson was a solid game manager. And Wilson has 20, he had 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions. So my theory on this is that is why people are saying that. And what if I told you that the, we'll call them the red zone watchers and the box score readers were hornswoggled, absolutely hornswoggled uh, by this. That it's hocus pocus is what it is. This was abracadabra coaching by Sean Payton. He provided the illusion of quality under center. Is it true that Russell Wilson's stat line was made by smoke and mirrors? And you can't see me, but I am nodding my head. Yes. Now, what is my evidence? Now, we mentioned this just a few minutes ago, but Russell Wilson threw 27% of his passes behind the line of scrimmage. Behind the line of scrimmage. That is the most in the NFL in almost 20 years of data, going back to 2005. Uh, But wait, there's more. He threw 62% of his passes within five yards of the line of scrimmage. That was the second highest out of, again, 500-plus quarterbacks going back the last almost 20 years. So the the lesson here, the, the Broncos had no intermediate passing game. Occasionally, they'd throw the ball deep down the field. But uh, Russ uh, just didn't didn't perform. He he wasn't asked to perform because Sean Payton did not trust Russ the bust. We knew going in to that year, we had talked about it on these microphones, that the Broncos were going to play hide the quarterback. But even by our estimation, the Broncos went above and beyond the call of duty playing hide the quarterback. This was a record-breaking season for any quarterback in terms of throwing underneath. Like, we make jokes about quarterbacks throwing behind the line of scrimmage, and we goof on them that way. We bust balls. But no one has had a year like Russ had with Sean Payton coaching. Now, just between me and you, right, dollars to donuts, don't you think if Sean Payton, maybe Sean Payton's a douche, I don't know, but if, if you had any sense that Russell Wilson could complete passes consistently in the mid, mid-range passing game and the downfield passing game, don't you think you would have attempted it a little more and not just thrown it 25, over 25% of the time behind the line of scrimmage? Now, most to be fair, most teams in the modern NFL, a lot of the passing is within five yards of the line of scrimmage. But even that, the, uh, the Broncos went, went gaga. All right, final point, the hour of rust. Denver. Uh, I saw this bouncing around. Denver is not officially releasing Russell Wilson until next week. However, however, they are giving Russ and his agent super secret permission to immediately begin talking with other teams. So should, here's the question, should the Broncos be praised for letting Russell Wilson have communication uh, with, with teams before officially becoming a free agent? So on this one, I am shaking my head rapidly. No. Uh, That's that's the answer on that. No. It is a professional courtesy, right? It's pigskin decorum is what it is. So you don't get credit. It's like the old Chris Rock bit. You don't get credit for what you're supposed to be doing anyway. Like Sean Payton will personally. I, I am convinced in my heart of hearts that Sean Payton will personally leave his mansion. He'll drive down to Russ's mansion in a limousine and take Russ to the airport and he'll roll out a red carpet and throw rose petals as Russ walks to the to the TSA and Peyton will carry the bags. And not only that, Peyton will go through security 
and he will walk to the through the terminal to make sure Russ gets on the plane. And he'd really like, and all of the Bronco people would love Russell Wilson to end up with the Raiders because then they could play him twice, and they would love uh, that. That would be, oh, my God. That would be so good. So one, if you're the Broncos, if you're the Raiders, uh, it's indigestion. 